Hello everyone, this is Sudarshan. I'm a product owner here at NI, which is now the test and measurement business unit within Emerson. Today, we are going to see how to create work orders, test plans, and schedule the test plans to a test system in SystemLink Enterprise. A work order represents a contract between a requester and the lab. The requester is basically the person or an internal organization which is requesting a particular work to be carried out at the lab. The requester could be a product engineer or a product architect from the R&D organization requesting a suite of tests to be carried out on their device. A test plan details the information needed to execute a test in a test station. The test plan includes details about the test program, test parameters, the depth that needs to be tested, etc. A work order can have multiple test plans under them, one each for the different tests that has to be carried out on the device. Let's now quickly recap the different user personas involved in lab operations. On the left, you see the R&D engineer or a product engineer who defines the specifications of the device, defines the different test requirements for the device to be validated. On the top, we have the validation engineer who is responsible for developing the test programs, defining the test parameters based on the requirements provided by the product engineer. Once the tests are defined, the test plan is now assigned to the lab manager to schedule the test plan to the appropriate test station in the lab. Once scheduled and when the tests are due, the operator is responsible for preparing the test system, test bench and the DAT. The operator takes care of executing the test and collects the test results and uploads them back to SystemLink Enterprise. Now, let's see a demo of the work order and test plan workflows as we trace the journey of the different user personas. Let's play the role of an R&D engineer. I'll start by creating a product for the battery cell that I wanted to test. The product is now created. As an R&D engineer, I would like to request a work order for testing and analysis of the newly designed lithium-ion battery cells in the laboratory. The goal is to evaluate the performance, charging cycles, and safety characteristics of the prototype under different temperature and load conditions. So I'm in the work orders page within SystemLink Enterprise. I'll start by clicking on Create New Work Order. Let me give a name for my work order. I'm going to ask for this request to be carried out between December 18th and December 23rd. And I'm going to assign this to my lab manager, Joshua Pravid. I have now created my work order. I can then go and create a list of test plans that I want to execute as part of this work order. I like to run five different tests on this particular battery cell. I'll start by creating a new test plan. I'm going to look for the product that I just created. I've already uploaded a bunch of test plan templates for this particular product family. As you can see, those test plan templates are listed here. I can either choose from an available template or try to create a blank test plan. I'm going to pick a template now and click on charge and discharge thermal test. I can click on next and provide various details about the test plan itself. As you can see, there are a bunch of parameters that the test plan has inherited from the test plan template that we had chosen. I can provide some additional details and I can also override some of the custom properties that exist. So yeah, I've created one particular test plan. I'll go ahead and create four other test plans for this particular device. I've created five different tests now and they are assigned to the test engineer Sandeep for test program development. Test engineer Sandeep is going to work on the test plan definition. He's going to develop the test program that's needed to perform this test and also define the test parameters. Once that's complete, Sandeep will move the state to define and assign the test plan to the lab manager, Joshua Pravit, for scheduling. In parallel, as a lab manager, once the devices have arrived in the lab for testing, I'll go add them as DUTs under my product. So here, I have four different DUTs of type BC01 added as DUTs under my product battery cell BC01. Once the test plans are defined, it is the responsibility of the lab manager to schedule the test plans. Clicking on test plans navigates me to the test plans page. Here, there are a bunch of features that help me manage the test plans. 
you can click on search to quickly search for all test plans that have the word inspection you can also use filter to kind of filter the list of test plans by various test plan properties you can also configure the different properties that are displayed as columns on the table and you can also prefer to group the test plans by say for example the part number once you have made some customizations you can also save the view as a named view Alternately, I can also make use of the summary tiles at the top of this page to click and quickly filter the list of test plans. I'm going to click on the defined tile to list all test plans that are defined and ready for scheduling. Let me now schedule the charge and discharge thermal test. I'm going to click on the test plan and then open it in scheduling assistant. In the scheduling assistant page, you basically see the list of systems that are capable of running this particular test. This list comes from the system filter that's associated with the test plan template that we selected while creating the test plan. This page also lists all the DUTs that are available under that particular product that we created. This page shows the availability of the different test stations and also the different DUTs. Looking at the availability of the different test systems, you can notice that battery cell station is the earliest test system that's available. I'm going to click on battery cell station one and also on BC01001. In the top row, you can see the combined availability of the selected system and the DUT. Based on this, I'm going to pick 18th of Wednesday for my test plan. I'm going to schedule the entire day for the particular test plan. Once the scheduling is done, I'll click on save to confirm the schedule. Alternately, I can also use the controls at the top to select the start date and end date for the test plan. On schedule, you can click on the schedule tile and see that this particular test plan shows up here. The lab manager can now similarly schedule all other test plans that are defined. Once the test execution is complete, the test plan state is automatically updated to pending approval. The operator or the lab manager can now reassign this test plan to the original requester, the R&D engineer. The R&D engineer can now review the test results that are collected and use the collaboration features to tag the lab manager or the operator to request for additional details. Once the R&D engineer is happy with the test results, the state of the test plan is moved to closed. Once all the test plans under a work order is completed, the work order is also moved to close. You can also look at the combined availability of all systems that are available in the lab by navigating to the schedule page. In the schedule page, you can see all test plans that are scheduled against the particular system in timeline view. From this page, you can click on a card and then get the same options as what you see on the test plan table. You can also drag and drop cards on this particular schedule view and update the test plan schedule. To recap, in this demo, we have seen how you can use SystemLink Enterprise to create and manage work orders and test plans, and also schedule test plans to a test system and DUT using the Intuitive Scheduling Assistant. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe so that you can be notified when we post videos in future. In addition, there is a link in the description to SystemLink forums where you can engage with us directly.